and welcome to Midnight Readings. So we are finally at the hiatus until the next half of this season. So I hope these little stories can keep you going for a little longer until you get a new episode. Today I'll be reading a little story called That's All, written by, I'm going to get this wrong, Archmage Ludi Russus. Sorry if I've mispronounced that. Sorry if I've completely butchered it, because I have. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy. Ponyville wasn't acting incredibly out of the ordinary. The sun shone brightly, Celestia's light smothering the land. The clouds, positioned meticulously by Pegasi, cast shade over just the right places. The day was tranquil, cool and simple, just as most ponies liked. Pinky liked all the days in Ponyville. She had always been happy wherever she went and wherever she would go. Pinky liked to think of all kinds of things, but most of all, she loved to think of nothing. Not to say that Pinky was dumb or thoughtless, but that she had found it was easier for her to be cheerful when she didn't think about it. And when she was happy, other ponies were happy. And when other ponies were happy, it made Pinky happy. That was why Pinky didn't think too much of where she was going as she bounced all over Ponyville, making the lives of others brighter wherever she went. Of course, not paying attention to where one was going has certain downsides. Pinky realised this and always made certain to apologise whenever she bounced into anything. Oops! Sorry, Applejack! Silly me! I really should watch where I'm going one of these days! Pinky looked about her, observing her immediate surroundings quickly. She was on the bridge and Applejack was hitched to her apple cart. She must have been about to set up for the market. Pinky loved the market. It was always so, so fun. Pinky also saw that Applejack was saying something. She love, love, loved Applejack, just like all her friends, so she made sure to listen. My hat, Pinky, quickly, grab my hat. Oh no, she must have knocked off Applejack's hat. Quickly looking up, she saw the hat, caught by the wind, slowly wafting above the Ponyville River. The Ponyville River wasn't very wide. A fast-flowing river that was only half a metre deep could sweep a small pony away, though. That was more than enough to sweep a hat away. Pinkie Pie would have to jump to get the hat. Now. Sorry, Applejack, I'll get it! Pinkie knew a lot of things, and one of those things was that while not thinking was great, thinking quickly could help ponies. And ponies that you help are even happier than ones who see you happy. Not to mention, Pinky knew that Applejack's hat was special to her, so Pinky leaped at it. Her little pink legs curled like miniature pink springs, and she jumped as high as she could to grab the Stetson in her teeth. Even as she cleared the ground, however, she realized that she should have thought faster. If she caught Applejack's hat, she'd just end up dragging it into the river, and that would ruin it. Pinky's mind clocked into overdrive, whirling almost audibly as she searched for a solution. As she reached the hat, she realised that grabbing the hat was the best thing that she could do. It'll fall into the river anyways, but if she snagged it, then she would at least have it with her. Clenching it in her jaws, she was suddenly overcome with a sensory overload. As a baker, Pinky's sense of taste was well developed, and being Pinky certainly helped too. This hat tasted like a lot of things. She tasted layer upon layer of dirt, applied with care over the years, as this hat weared them all. Like the rings of a tree, she tasted every year of dirt intermingled with the sticky taste of the apples 
that the Hap's owners had knocked off the countless trees for generations. She tasted kind ponies, harsh ponies, smart ponies and dull ponies, strong ponies and weak ponies. But most of all, she tasted the years beyond count. A hat with age unfathomable. And she tasted apples. She tasted apples. The apples. All the apples, all together. Pinkie Pie realized something. This hat was not Applejack's. It was the Apple family's, and was a hat that would never belong to any pony. It belonged to itself. And as Pinkie neared the river, she realized something else. The Ponyville River was a meter deep, and she was a small pony. A crash jolted through the air as Pinkie and the hat landed in the water. Fighting the current, Pinkie fought to keep the hat above the water. As the light blue water drove Pinky into a rock, she gasped as air nearly knocked out of her. She wasn't going to give up her struggle though. Rolling in the water, Pinky pushed down hard on the offending rock. Pinky tumbled forward in the water, the hat repeatedly dunked in the unforgiving liquid. No, Pinky thought. This hat needs to get back to Applejack. She needs this hat to be her. It's the apple hat. Kicking out her legs to seek purchase, she found the ground. Turning forward so that she presented less surface area to the current, she held steady in the river. Then turning quickly, she bounced out of the center of the river towards shallower waters. Rolling under the sudden current once more, she dug into the ground and charged at the shore. Finding purchase, she stumbled out of the current into the bank. Pinkie Pie! Pinkie Pie! Are you alright? Applejack shouted, expectantly pulling her cart down to the other end of the bridge, spilling apples right and left as the two-wheeled rickety cart bounced up and down. Pinkie Pie! Applejack repeated her question, voice as drenched in concern as Pinkie was with water. Pinkie just lay on the ground, sobbing. Finally responding to her friend's repeated calls and she mumbled something. As Applejack saw Pinkie speak, she sighed in relief. Pinkie Pie, you downright scared me. I was worried about you. Can you stand up? Are you alright? You can't move, can't you? Pinkie let out a ball of tears streaming from her eyes as she sobbed. Pinkie! Applejack shouted, voice cracking in fear. Oh, don't worry, I'll go get some help. The hospital's nearby. I'm so sorry. Pinky broke out, sniffling terribly. <laughs> I killed it, it's broken. What's killed? What's broken? Did you break a bone? Don't worry, I'll be... Applejack cut herself off as she finally saw her Stetson laying in front of Pinky. It might have been able to survive one soaking, but when Pinky had tumbled with the rocks, a big tear had formed in the top of the hat where Pinky had been holding it. The following combination of movement and water impression had spread the wear on the already damaged hat, tearing it clean in half. Smiling gently at Pinkie Pie, Applejack unhitched herself from the cart and walked over to her sobbing friend and sat down beside the prone pink pony. I'm sorry, Applejack. Pinky whispered. I'm sorry, it's ruined. I understand if you never want to be my friend again. Sugar Cube, I'm just glad you're all right, Applejack said. I was worried that you were ruined. She chuckled. I'll never forgive you if you hurt yourself grabbing my hat for me. Pinkie Pie looked up, pointing. You wouldn't? Of course I would. Applejack wrestled her friend into a hug. I just never forgive myself, that's all. Pinky giggled for a second, and then remembered the circumstances. Then she lodged a stammered, sniffily protest. <laughs> but, but your hat. I, I broke your hat. I broke the hat. It's completely unfixable. It was a family heirloom. 
Aren't you mad at me? Applejack pulled Pinky off the grind. How'd you know it was family heirloom? I got it from my pa, who got it from Granny Smith. Who got it from... <laughs> Don if I know. Applejack reminisced. It tasted funny. Applejack opened her mouth as if to argue for a second, but then shook her head. You really are a mystery, aren't you, Pinky? Come on, let's get you somewhere to dry off before you get a cold. You're already sniffing, and I don't want you getting a sick on account of a hat. I'm a mystery. What about you? I just destroyed a family relic and you're not even upset. Pinky, Applejack said flatly, turning to look at the baker. It was just a hat. That's all it is in the end. All it would be. A hat. Now, come on. I'm sure Twy has a fire going. And if she doesn't, Spike can light one for you. Following her friend, Pinky watched as Applejack hitched herself to the cart and began to trudge towards the library. Away from the market. Stopping herself before she said anything else, Pinky shook her head. It was just Applejack. Being Applejack. Well, that was a bit of a turn of events. That was That's All, written by Archmage Lrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr